So in this question, we have to somehow figure out the number of cubic meters of gas that needs to be burned every day to maintain an inside temperature of 25 degrees Celsius if it is zero degrees Celsius outside. Now there are actually a few equations that we're going to need in order to make that calculation. We're going to start with the equation outlined in this purple box and it tells us that the volume of gas that must be burned will equal the energy that is transferred from the house to the outside divided by the heat of combustion that is given in the question. Now let's just briefly understand why this is going to work for us. Let's make up a couple of hypothetical numbers here. For example, let's just say that the amount of energy was some simple number like 1000 joules. And furthermore, let's say that the heat of combustion was 10 joules per meter cubed. If we divide those out, we would get 100, but more importantly, look at the units. The joules would cancel out, and you would be left with meters cubed, which of course is a standard unit of volume. So this idea of taking the amount of energy that is transferred from the house to the outside, and then dividing that by the heat of combustion of the house's furnace, or whatever other device is being used, that will indeed give us the volume. So that's our goal is to use that equation. Now, of course, we already have the heat of combustion. That was given to us, albeit in a non-standard unit. So that's fine, we have that. The more challenging aspect of this question will be to find the energy that is transferred from the house to the outside environment. So we'll move down a step here, and now we'll look at this equation. And we know from basic physics that energy in multiple contexts would equal the amount of power that's being transferred multiplied by the amount of time. Now for the amount of time, we're okay because we are trying to calculate this in terms of a single day. But now what we're gonna need to do is step aside and determine the power. And that's where this chapter's new concept enters into play. We have the power transferred from the inside of the house to the outside given by this equation. We have a thermal conductivity constant. We have the area of the house's surfaces. We have a temperature difference. And then we have the average thickness of the walls and roof of the house. Now, we'll notice that we're going to need to calculate the area. All the other values were given in the question, all those values, but the area was not given, at least not directly. So that's our first calculational goal, is to determine the total amount of area of this house. Now, we have to break the area up into the area of the side walls, the end walls, the gables, and the roof. So we actually have to make four area calculations. Let's start with the sides here. We have this side of the house and then the opposite side there. So we're going to say that the area of the side equals, now those sides are just rectangles and we can see that the length of the rectangle is eight and the height of that rectangle is five as indicated over there. So we're going to multiply eight meters by five meters and then we have to double that result because there are two sides of course. So we have 40 times two. This is going to give us 80 meters squared. Okay, let's talk about the end walls, which I guess would just be the front and the back of the house. The terminology here is sort of semantical. So we have this length right here, which is 10 meters, multiplied by this height right here, which is five meters. And then again, we have to double that. So 50 times two is 100 meters squared. Now we can turn to the gables. The gables would be the triangular sections here. And then there's another one right beside the chimney over there. We can see that those gables are triangular shaped. And so to get the area of the gables, we're gonna to have to use the formula for the area of a triangle. So that would be one half times the base. Now the base of that triangle looks like eight meters. And then times the height. Now the height is a little bit tricky here. It's going to be this dimension right there. Now we will assume that this triangle is nice and isosceles, nice and symmetrical. So that would mean that this dimension is four meters because it's half of the eight. And then we need that height right there. So we'll do a little bit of trigonometry. We can see from this little triangle that we can color in green right there, that the tangent of that 37 degree angle would equal the opposite side, which is the height, divided by this adjacent side, which is four meters. So if we multiply both sides of this by four meters, we can see that the height of this triangular gable is four meters times the tangent of 37. So that's what we're gonna put in for the height. 
And then don't forget that we have to double this result because there are two gables. Now let's pick up our calculators. Let's make sure that they are set to degree mode. And if you multiply this all out, you should get 24.1. And this would be in meters squared. Finally, we need the area of the roof. And the area of the roof is going to be the area of a rectangle. It's this rectangle right here. And there are two sides to that roof. It looks like this dimension for the roof is 10 meters. But this dimension is going to be a little bit harder to find. Let's clean this up a little bit. So again, we're looking for this dimension, which would actually be the same as this dimension, actually, by symmetry. So let's go back to that triangle, that right triangle that we were exploring earlier. This time we'll use the cosine function. So this would be the hypotenuse of that right triangle. And then that four meter side right here would be the adjacent side. So the cosine of a 37 degree angle here would equal the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. Now, if you solve that for hypotenuse, you would see that that hypotenuse is actually four meters divided by the cosine of 37. So that's going to be the length of this dimension right here, which is the same as this dimension. So back to the calculation for the area of that roof, which is a, again, a rectangle. It would be the length, which was 10 meters, multiplied by the width, which we determined was four meters over cosine of 37 degrees. And then there are two of them. So again, pick up your calculator in degree mode, work this out, and you should get 100.2 meters squared. Now we can get the total area of the house just by summing these four values. So let's go ahead and do that. And when you do that, you will get a total area of 304.3 meters squared. Okay, so that's cool. That's the total area. We can go back to our calculation. And in fact, why don't we copy it and bring it down just because we're gonna run out of room up there. And we'll start to fill in the values here. So remember, we're gonna calculate the power. We're gonna need that thermal conductivity. That was given to us way up in the beginning of the problem. It was 4.8 times 10 to the negative four kilowatt per meter degree Celsius. So I'm not gonna remember that. 4.8 times 10 to the minus four. Now be careful here, because that was given in kilowatts. You want it in watts, so you have to multiply it by 10 to the third. That would give you watts per, I think it was meter squared degrees Celsius, times the area. Oh boy, we just found that. So 304.3 meters squared. The hot temperature would be inside the house. That was 25 degrees. Outside it was zero degrees Celsius. And then divided by the average thickness of the walls and roof and so on. And that was given to us as 21 centimeters. Let's convert that into meters, however. So you'll take 21 and then multiply it by 10 to the negative two. That will get it in meters. Okay, now pick up your calculators again. Carefully type these numbers in. And when you do so, you should get a power of 17,388 approximately. Let's write that down, 17,388. And it looks like dimensionally we're gonna be left with watts. So there's the power, we are getting somewhere, I assure you. We can now get the energy because we know that energy is equal to power multiplied by the time interval. And in this case, we're calculating the amount of energy within one day. So we're gonna take a time interval of 86,400 seconds. Note that is how many seconds there are in a day. And so now you get this really large number. We're gonna actually put this into scientific notation. So you're gonna end up with about 1.50 times 10 to the ninth. And this is now in joules. We are almost there. We're moving on to that purple box equation. We take the amount of energy transferred, which we just determined, and then divide that by the heat of combustion. Now, the heat of combustion is given in an unfortunately non-standard unit. 9,300, was it kilocalories per meter cubed? These are filled with numbers, these problems. Yeah, kilocalories per meter cubed. Okay, so on the bottom here, you're gonna have 9,300. Let's see, kilocalories per meter cubed. We're gonna to have to make a conversion here, which we will do in just a moment. Up here is 
five times 10 to the ninth joules. And it turns out there are 4186 kilocalories, excuse me, 4186 joules per kilocalorie. And so if you set up the conversion in that manner, these kilocalories will cancel, these joules will cancel, that's gonna leave you with meters cubed. So one more calculation here, do this one carefully. And when you do this, you're going to get 300, no, 38.6, excuse me. My calculator was set to scientific notation, so it was kind of hard to read, but it's 38.6 meters cubed. That would be the final answer.